Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about the second, uh, do a second video on Fourier series. We're going to be talking about two auxiliary concepts, one of periodic extensions and, then, and a notion of piecewise smoothness. This is very much like sort of a, a utility vi vi video. That allow, we need, we need these, these concepts to answer our questions. Okay, and the questions were, from the previous video, uh, does the error between a, trunca a truncated Fourier series and the function itself that we want to represent, does it go to zero as, as capital N goes to infinity? And we know the answer is going to be yes. All right, so that's, that's the first question. Uh, but the second question, which is maybe the more interesting one, is that does f hat of n, which is going to be our Fourier series, does it equal f at all x in our domain? And the answer here is, the answer here is not always. And part of the issue stems from the fact that if I look at f hat of x, it's equal to this. I'll just write it down real quick. Like that. Um, clearly, this is a periodic function. It's a periodic function, and it's defined uh, for all x in the real numbers. But f of x is only defined uh, for x on the interval negative pi to pi. Uh, and f may not be periodic. In fact, it could be anything it wants. It can be anything, right? The whole point of function approximation uh, and function representation is that we should have f be as, as a wide a class of functions as possible, uh, provided that the magnitude of f, we actually have a square integral, integrable function, all right? We need something that's at least definable. Uh, but we don't want to have too many restrictions on f. We want to have, we want to have a minimal uh, a number of restrictions on what f can be, right? And that's of course the goal. We want to we want to represent as many functions as possible we want to, um, with Fourier series. Okay. So that's sort of the goal here. Um, but again, like I said, the real issue comes down to the fact that Fourier series, by definition, are periodic functions. Okay, They're periodic functions. But f may not be periodic. In fact, it, can, it should be anything, a non-periodic function. All it has to do is be defined on our interval in question, negative pi to pi. And it has some basic restriction on uh, its integrability. Um, but we want to probably put a few more restrictions on it to get a better understanding of why of our questions. Um, and what does it mean for these two functions to be equal or at least be almost equal to each other? All right, so with those basic pieces uh, detailed out, let's now go on to the next thing. So we need to define a periodic extension.
of f of x. So again, recall that f of x is defined on the interval negative pi to pi. Uh, but what we get, but what we want to do is what we want to do is essentially copy and then paste f of x onto the real line. Okay, so let's do a better line than that. That's a good flat line there. Okay, we have zero there, and we have negative pi, and we have pi, and then we have uh, three pi right there, and then we have negative three pi there. Okay, so if f is this function, Maybe that's the function right there, f of x. All we want to do is we want to we know the function is defined up to all the way up to pi right there. But what we're going to do is delete the very outside edge point, and then we're going to do that copy paste job. So again, the f value from the left side of the interval negative pi is now going to be on the very right side. And we're going to copy that function. So I'll do my best to do a good drawing of it. So this is going to be that copy-paste. And we're going to do that same copy-paste job. And we're going to do it that way, but we're also going to do it over this way. And again, my artwork, my hand might not be as steady as, as yours, but that's the idea. And it goes like that. So we're going to give this a name. Um, we're going to call that whole periodic extension, we're going to call that f p e of x. And it's defined on the entire real line. OK. And what we do, of course, is delete f at pi, replace with f at negative pi, and then copy, and then paste. OK, um, so that's what we're going to call FPE, or the periodic extension. OK, all right. So now we have that defined. And again, the, the utility of this periodic extension, we're going to find out in a subsequent video. Again, this is very much a utility video that just details a few, uh, a few pieces in order to, to get an understanding. We just need these definitions laid down before we can do anything else. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go on to the next definition, and that's the one of, um, of, of piecewise continuity. and piecewise smoothness. So piecewise continuity and piecewise smoothness. So here, again, let's consider uh, f of x, and it's going to be on that domain, negative pi to pi. All right. Uh, so piecewise continuity, I'm going to call that PC. I'm going to call this PS. Okay. Uh, so f of x may not be continuous on all of x of negative pi to pi. All right. But We'll define a, a little bit weaker type of continuity, which is called piecewise continuity. PC means we can break um, the interval. In this case, that's going to be negative pi to pi into subintervals. And they're going to be open intervals. 
I'm going to call them II. And they're going to go from AI all the way to BI. Okay. And those AI to BI are such that the interval can be reconstructed out of them. I should actually hold on and say that, that they are disjoint. They don't overlap. Okay. Uh, and that the interval can be broken up into these pieces. So it can be I1, I2, union I3, all the way to IN. Okay. Um, and we need it to be that, that basically I, I are finite. Okay, there's only finitely many. Okay, that's really important that there's finitely many. Um, and then in addition to that, then we also just have to union, in addition to all of those intervals, we just need to also add in the boundary points. So AI and the BIs um, from I equals one to N. So there's that finitely many, basically that N is less than infinity. Okay, those have to be added in as well to construct the whole interval. Okay, if we can do this, if we can break up our interval into a finite number of pieces so that on each I, I, F, F of X is continuous, then F is what we call piecewise continuous. And the and the and the the idea here is really quite simple. Okay, if here is negative pi all the way to pi, and let's say we have a function that looks like this. We have an open circle there, so we have a removable discontinuity here, and we have a jump discontinuity there. Uh, I would take that interval there, that would be I1. That would be I2. And that would be I3. And there would be these points right there and there uh, where we have those, those discontinuities. And essentially what we're doing is just cordoning off the discontinuities. So basically it means that there's finitely many discontinuities in F everywhere else F is continuous all right so that's a great definition so now we need one more definition and it's actually quite simple we need to talk about what does it mean to be piecewise smooth the only additional requirement is that basically F is piecewise continuous and uh, there are there are finitely many many points where DF DX is discon discontinuous. Okay, so the idea here is that in addition to f being continuous on these subintervals, its derivative is also continuous. So again, here is negative pi, there is pi, we have a function like that. That's the idea here. And basically, df dx, hold on, I'll, I'll, I'm going to back up there for a second. And then I, I want to put a kink in that function right there. So basically, df dx, not continuous here. So what we do is we just break up the interval 
so that basically you have an I1, an I2, and an I3 where jump discontinuities and removal discontinuities as well as uh, cusps or other kinks in the function where the derivative isn't continuous, you want to break those up and isolate them as well. So those are the definitions that we're going to need uh, going forward uh, to cover and answer the questions about, about convergence of Fourier series. Until the next video, thank you very much.